Hello everyone, it's Chappie Peter again from Booyah. Hey, how are you going? Last Saturday we attended the Booyah Spring Fair. It is held in the Shire Hall and profits from the sale of fruit, veggies and baking, which are optioned off at the end of the day, are donated to the Flying Doctor Service. The Flying Doctor Service, known as the RFDS, as you probably know, provides an aerial ambulance service and also regularly brings doctors and other medical staff out to remote communities throughout Australia, where they conduct day clinics and return to the big city at the end of the day. A short direct flight to the nearest large hospital with a broken leg sure beats hours of driving on corrugated dirt roads in the outback at the, with the risk of running into a few roos and cattle as well. Anyway, our spring fair has displays of children's schoolwork, photography, cooking, local produce, floral displays, needlework and other craft displays to name a few. It's great to see all of this effort and interesting to see who won prizes. All of the entries should have won first prize of course, but that's not how the system works. It's amazing how much talent there is in a community of people and it's great to see the product of their talents and hard work. You know, we all have talents and abilities and as Christians, it is our joy, privilege and can I say our responsibility to be using them for the common good and our, in our different ministries of caring for each other. The Bible teaches about talents. There is a parable Jesus told about them called the parable of the talents in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verse 14 to 30. And it tells of a boss who is leaving his house to travel and before leaving, entrusts his business to his servants. According to the abilities of each man, one servant received five talents. Maybe you could care them, call them shares. The second had received two and the third received only one. You might like to look this story up on Bible Gateway on the net or find it in your Bible at home. Anyway, it's interesting to see how they use those talents. And thinking about talents and the line of work we end up doing, either as our job or our spare time or recreational activity, it is good to note that work is good. We were created for it, and it's especially good to be working in the area where we can use our God-given talents and abilities. Sometimes we can't find work in that area, but we can still work with diligence for the good of our employer and work on being good neighbours, caring parents and grandparents and so on. The bottom line is that we are doing it for God. I like the verses in the Bible like Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 that says, and I quote, Servants, do what you're told by your earthly masters and don't just do the minimum that will get you by. Do your best. Work from the heart for your real master, for God, confident that you'll get paid in full when you come into your inheritance. Keep in mind always that the ultimate master you're serving is Christ. You know, my dad used to say, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. As Christians, it is good to remember that we live and breathe and work to please our heavenly dad. Sometimes we get weary in work and are tempted to either do a sloppy job or simply give up. It's great to be reminded of the exhortation and a quote, so let us not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. Right now, therefore, every time we get the chance, let us work for the benefit of all, starting with the people closest to us in the community of faith. Says Paul in Colossians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. And isn't it great to get some positive feedback about your work and from your work? Like the parable of the talents where the master said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I'll give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Matthew 20, 25, verse 23. Sounds like a promotion coming up there, doesn't it? A word of encouragement or a positive comment straightens our shoulders and we find ourselves working with a light heart even staying longer than the boss requires and taking even more pride in her work. 
as compared to criticism and how it makes us feel. I heard somewhere that if one needs to be a critic, say two positives for every negative. By the same token, I also heard, listen to criticism, there just might be some truth in it. One day as Christians, we will we'll receive rewards for our work in the next life, and I reckon the best reward will be the, quote, well done, good and faithful servant. We still have the rewards coming to us here, more immediately, signs of appreciation, a box of chocolates, that always goes down well, or a packet of smackos for the dog, not to mention that promotion. The work that we have and do has been provided in advance for us to do. In the Bible we read, in Ephesians 2 verse 10, he creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does, the good work he has gotten ready for us to do, work we had better be doing. And we read in a different version, for we are, we are God's masterpiece, he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. As we labour on, it's great to keep a kingdom focus, to know that we are immortal while God still has work for us to do. Apparently this quote originated from George Whitfield, a famous Anglican minister, and it seems quite apt. And we can look for opportunities to be not only the best at our places on in, of employment, but to be of service in our communities. Jesus, in fact, said in Matthew's Gospel 25, verse 35 to 40, quote, Then the king will say to those on his right, Enter, you who are blessed by my Father. Take what's coming to you in this kingdom. It's been ready for you since the world's foundation. And here's why. I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was homeless, and you gave me a room. I was shivering, and you gave me clothes. I was sick, and you stopped to visit. I was in prison, and you came to me. And then a bit further on, verse 37 to 40, then those sheep are going to say, Master, what are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry and feed you, thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we ever see you sick or in prison and come to you? Then the king will say, I'm telling you the solemn truth. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. End of quote. It's important to note that we do not gain our entrance into heaven, the pearly gates, by our good deeds, as the entrance fee there was paid for and is offered as a free gift. See Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9. And now as Christians, having taken that gift, we're new creations. See 2 Corinthians 5.17. And God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So we must be about our boss's business, the work of being his ambassadors in this world. 2 Corinthians 5.20. And it's comforting to know from the experience of many, including Hudson Taylor, famous missionary to China in the old days, who said, quote, God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply, end of quote. God is too wise a God to frustrate his purposes for lack of funds and lack of enabling, and he can just as easily supply them ahead of time as afterwards, and he much prefers doing so, said someone. Bless you as you cheerfully work for the boss, with a capital B. Keep up the good work and don't lose heart. And finally a prayer. Lord, thank you for giving us work of so many different sorts to not only keep us busy and in funds to buy what we need. Thank you that you call us as ambassadors to do your work of caring, encouraging, challenging, praying, even silently working in the background. And we do this to please you and for your glory. Amen. Bless you. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.